Okay, now I'm sure you were all absolutely thrilled by that example that we had just had when we were trying to figure out the Taylor series by taking successive derivatives. My good news here is that a lot of times we don't have to go through that crap. And we don't want to go through that crap, do we? We can do what we did from in the previous section as well. If a series looks like close to something that we already know, we can build from a known series. So if you take a look at the Taylor series sheet that is on the um, on Canvas, there's more of them than this, but these are a few of the series that are on that sheet. Uh, you can just use them. What I mean by that is, especially when you're looking at a Maclaurin series, right? For example, if we were to do the Maclaurin series for um, e to the 4x. Actually, let's make it even worse. Let's make it to the x squared. Okay? Well, for God's sake, you don't want to take successive derivatives of e to the x squared because the first one is going to be 2x e to the x squared, and then it's going to be um, a whole mess of awful product rule trash, right? I'm just saying. So we don't want to do that. But since we know what the McLaurin series is for e to the x, which I wrote up here, I hope you can see it, all you need to do is shove in x squared for x and you're done. Okay? So absolutely, we can see that e to the x squared is n equals 0 to infinity, x squared to the n, n factorial. Okay? Easy, right? And if it was 4x, I could have done 4x too. I mean, I could have put 4x in there. I can clean it up a little bit. Of course, we would always want to see that written like that instead. Notice it's not 2n. It's just n. It's everything the same. You're just changing. You're just substituting in something for the x. Similarly, <coughs> let's do something like x squared of sine 3x. Similarly to what we did before, I'm just going to leave the x squared on the outside for a minute. I'm just going to take my cosine 3x, go over here, here's x. I'm going to put in 3x for the x in here, and then it's going to be in here. And I do want to clean this up, okay? I don't want to leave the x squared out there. I want to combine everything as much as possible. So let's see. Can't do anything with that. Can't do anything with that. 3x to the 2n is 3 to the 2n, x to the 2n, right? 3 to the 2 and I can leave it that way. I can write it as 9 to the n. It doesn't matter to me. But maybe it would look better if I wrote it as 9 to the n, right? So we need a 9 to the n and x to the 2 n. But it's 2 n plus 2 because I want to take this x squared and put it into that. So for me, I broke it up, these guys. So that when I multiply this guy, this is going to be x squared there, x squared, and that becomes x to the 2n plus 2. So this is my nicest, cleanest, prettiest form. Way, way better than having to take all those derivatives and evaluate at zero. That would be just awful. We don't want to do that if we don't have to. Sometimes we have to. But a lot of times we can get away with not doing that. So, that is that. One example, which is an important example, um, but we, we, that we didn't go through the derivation of, it is in your book, is this one down here. This is the binomial series. I'm sure you're familiar with the binomial, se 
polynomial series for k being um, some integer, right? 1 plus x to the 4th, right? You know you can pull that out. Very, It's a finite, finite uh, polynomial. Um, you can use Pascal's triangle, all that stuff. If you want to figure that out, if you, want, if you remember that. But using infinite series, we can actually expand this for k here, where k now is no longer just an integer. Okay? So it's a, a little bit, and then we can use this. Okay, so just going for it a little bit, let me point it out. What is this k by n? So for our binomial series here, it's the same on k choose n. Okay, I should call it k choose n. So for k choose n, um, even when k is not an integer, n is still an integer, right? n is going from 0 to infinity. k, this top part, is going to be k, k minus 1, all the way down to k minus n plus 1. Okay? But you can just, if you are using this, you can just write k choose n and leave it like that. You don't have to write this out. Okay? So if I just want to use this formula simply the way it is to do the expansion of something, let me show you an example of where we would do that. Let's say we're going to do the Maclaurin series for f of x equals x over square root of 4 minus x squared. Okay? So this doesn't look great, but I'm just going to work, I'm going to ignore the x. But what is this? This is kind of like this. If I take k being negative 1 half, and I mess around with this bottom part until it looks like 1 plus something, and then I can use this for them. So that is, a, that is something we can do. Okay. So let me write it in that form. I know that I need the one here. So this is very, very similar to what we did with the um, other one, right? With the geometric series, it was like four minus nine X or something. And we had to write it as one. So I'm just essentially going to pull out the four here. But if I'm pulling it out of a square root, it's going to be a two, right? And then this is going to be X squared over four. I can also think of it as multiplying top and bottom by 2 over 2, pulling in the 2, 4 becomes a 1. However you want to think about it, but these two, as you know, are equivalent. And then I can write this as 1 over 2 times, this would be 1 minus, minus x squared over 4. And so what is this really? It's 1 half times 1 minus, minus x squared over 4 to the negative 1 half. Okay? Now it's, no, darn it, <laughs> that's what I meant, plus, right? Because I'm negative plus here, that's why I put the minus, okay? That's how I want it. So this whole thing, I'm going to put it in there for that, x. Now, what my original, remember my original one now had an x here. So let's just be a little bit careful then. Let me write down here f of x. I've got x over 2 times this thing, which I wrote in the binomial way negative one half. So 
by the way, so that it's clear, this k is a number. We're going to put it down the number for k. And our case here, our k is negative one half. We're just going to use that thing. So I've got the x over 2 in front here. Then I'm going to use this and this, right? I'm going to do sum from n equals 0 to infinity. Negative 1 half is n. And then here's my x, though. Minus x squared over 4 dx. Okay? So, and this has a radius of convergence of 1. So this is true for absolute value. Oh, let's be careful. Because I shoved that whole thing in for x. Okay, so I have to pay attention to the radius of convergence when I have something here that's not infinity. In the previous ones, I had 3x or x squared or whatever. I didn't even bother to write down the radius of convergence, so I should have. That was my error. I should have written r equals infinity. Okay? Because if it's equal to infinity, it doesn't matter if it's x squared or 3x or 50x or whatever. Here, it's going to, with the binomial series, it's going to matter because we have a restricted area. We have a restricted radius of convergence. It's also going to matter, as we saw back in the previous section, it's going to matter with the geometric series. Um, then there's an inverse tan on that list. Inverse tan comes from the geometric series, so it also inherits that same radius of convergence. So as long as you have a radius of convergence here and you're plugging stuff in, you have to pay attention to it. But if there's radius of convergence in infinity, you don't have to pay attention to it. That's what I like. But not always the way. So let's clean this up. This is a correct answer. It's just not in the prettiest form. I would accept this, but I really like to see it a little bit nicer. So But the most importantly, I would like to see all the x's together. But this just stays. Minus 1 half to choose n, I just leave that there. So what I have here, n equals 0 to infinity, minus 1 half to choose n. I've got minus 1 to the n, x to the 2n, this was Four to the n, but I pulled in, now I'm pulling my x over 2, so it's going to be plus 1. This 4 to the n, I even can just put a 2 there, that's not very attractive. But hey, let's just live with it. Okay, it could be 2 times 4 to the n. Or I could write it, if I'm really fancy, I could also write it as 2 to the 2n plus 1. Okay, that would be cute, right? Could do that. Let me do that because that's so much prettier. Right? See what I'm saying? 4 to the n times 2. 2 to the 2 to the n times 2. So this is 2 to the 2n plus 1. I can write it that way too. So let's just do that. But as I said, And in fact, then I can put both of those. I can do x over 2 to the 2n plus 1. Isn't that cute? All right, we have to amuse ourselves as we can in quarantine, right? And then what is going to happen down here with this? I have x squared less than 4. So this is good for f2 value x less than 2. Okay, we're moving from here. The, the negative is just killed by the absolute values. I can pull the square out. I can pull the 4 on the other side. And then I just take square roots of both sides. As you know, if I take square of both sides and square root of both sides, it's not going to change the, the uh, inequality. So you're going to get that. I like the first ones better myself. But hey, 